In this video, I'm going to tell you why it's not actually a bad idea to have multiple projects on your hobby table at once. Recently, on the Discord server for the Patreon supporters, Uncle Adam's Irregulars, um, there was a discussion that was, there's always discussion going on, but recently somebody said that they had broken one of their own rules and that they had uh, bought another project, bought another box of models before finishing the one that they were working on. Now, in a perfect world, I mean, you hear people talk about that all the time. In a perfect world, you never have you know, a bunch of models laying around, you know, uh, 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 while you're working on stuff. You don't, you don't just buy with the idea of buying and, 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 and you know, but um, we don't live in a perfect world. You know, I, I made a video about this a long time ago, Pachow. And uh, in this, basically I talked about how you don't want to go crazy and become a hoarder and just buy, 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 because you'll get to a point where you'll, you won't have enough life in you ever uh, or neither will your grandchildren to finish all the stuff that you might, you know, actually own in your hobby area basement in my situation. Um, on the other end of that spectrum is I don't have anything to paint until I get done painting these guys and then I'll buy another box and then I'll paint them. That sounds great, but honestly, the sweet spot's somewhere in between. Now, when I say between, I don't mean between I have no extra models in my house and then, you know, where I am. That I don't mean directly in the middle of those two things. When I say between, I mean really actually a lot closer to I don't have that many more models in my house. But the trick is, is that if you only have the one project that you're working on, on your table, and you have nothing else around you, you have nothing else to, um, for lack of a better term, distract yourself with, you may find yourself in a situation where you are going to run into a hobby trap. And when I say hobby trap, I don't mean like buying the wrong game or something like that. I'm talking about hobby motivational trap. I'm talking about I have worked myself into a corner or I've worked myself into a situation where I don't want to finish this right now. I just don't have it in me. I've gotten bored with it. Uh, I'm tired of painting blue, whatever the deal is, and then it causes you to not make any more progress. It causes you to not be doing any more painting or building or anything along those lines, and then that is a trap that then stops your hobby motivation. And I've always felt, even though I probably go the wrong way and have way too much stuff in my basement and way too many things that can actually kind of overwhelm one, uh, I still think it's a good idea to have maybe more than one project kind of going at a time. Years ago, I talked about in another video about how to change your focus a little bit to, uh, you know, if you're if you're bored of painting and you what, one thing you can do is switch to, to build mode, or if you're bored of building, you can switch to paint mode, and that can hopefully kind of kickstart your hobby motivation as well. Pachow. But it's not only just that. Sometimes it's just moving from one project to another. Maybe you're still in paint mode. You're just, I'm done painting these stormtroopers. I'm just, I, I can't do another stormtrooper today. So what do you do? Well, you could go and, you know, sit in front of the television or waste time that way, or you could go and, you know, hang out with your friends or family or something dumb like that. Or, or what you could do is you could switch to a different project and start painting, you know, um, World War II folks or uh, terrain, or you could be painting cars for gas lands. There's a lot of different things that you could do while still staying in paint mode to get it to the point where you're like, I just can't look at this anymore. So I'll go look at that. And having those things, they don't even have to be on your table, honestly. I buy these little plastic, um, they're like shoe boxes. I don't know why you make a plastic shoe box. If you buy a box of shoes, they come with a box. And, and, and But anyway, um, if you don't have shoes to put in them, you can put other cool stuff in them. They're clear. You can get them at like, I don't know, hardware stores or whatever. And uh, they're great for keeping projects in. If I'm working on a bunch of stuff, I can put it into this box and then go, okay, cool, and set it someplace. I can see what it is because it's a clear box. And then I can at any time be like, you know what? I'm just not going to work with these guys anymore. I'm going to put these guys into a different box and put them over here. And I'm going to grab this box, open it up. And you kind of kickstart your brain about thinking about something different. That's really, I think, important for your motivation. A lot of motivation is tricking yourself because really, as humans, for the most part, we just kind of want to be lazy. And if you want to get things done, you have to trick yourself into not being lazy. I look at this as a little bit less uh, dramatic of a change 
than going from paint mode to build mode. If you are tired of painting and you decide, okay, cool, I'm gonna go into build mode, well, very frequently, depending on your hobby desk area, you may have to configure your hobby desk area. You may have to put away your wet palette and move away your racks of paints, depending on how you, how you, how you have things set up, and then bring out like your big cutting mat thing and all that jazz. Um, some people don't necessarily have things set up that way. I generally don't have to make a lot of changes to my hobby area when I want to switch between build mode and paint mode, but sometimes it's just still even a bit daunting to go from build mode to build mode to paint mode. So in those situations, if you can just be, if you're in paint mode and now you're going to start painting something else, that can be helpful because then at least you're not having to reconfigure your entire you know hobby area. You're just going to you know taking this project, putting it in a box or whatever. Or even sometimes, depending on how big your hobby area is, you could just shove it to the side, you know. Um, over time, if you keep shoving stuff to the side, eventually you will have no hobby area left. So that's something to kind of think about as well. That's why I like the plastic boxes, because then if I decide, you know, down the road that I'm just not really interested in still working on this project, I can just pick it up and put it on a shelf. But the, the idea behind saying, I can't look at this anymore, I just, I'm not interested in doing this right now, um, and then you go do something else, and then once you get that project done, then very possibly in a lot of situations, at least I find, I'm then okay with going over here and saying, cool, now I'm gonna go work on this thing again. It, the, the concept of being able to kind of switch tracks like that is part of what is able to allow you to trick yourself into keeping your motivation up. And if you wanna keep your motivation up so that you actually get things done, having multiple projects out there, you know, um, I think is really important. And if you decide that you're the type of person that's like, I only have one project at any given time that I own even. Like if I decided, if I finish this tonight, you know, the game shop's closed. I'm not even able to start something until at least tomorrow after work when I go to the game shop again. I think that that's, you know, it's a great ideal to have to some degree. And in some people's situations, it's absolutely necessary. Either they just don't have the, the resources you know, for having at least a couple of kits laying around, or maybe they just don't have the space, that's totally understandable. But if you've got the space and the resources, being that austere, uh, I think can actually come back to bite you. So as humans, you know, we're relatively simple creatures. We need to be entertained. We need to be um, sometimes tricked into actually getting things done. And, and it's interesting in this hobby because this hobby is not work. This is not, for most of us, although, you know, commission painters will tell you, tell you differently, for most of us, this is not something that is designed to, you know, be able to put food on our table. For a lot of us, this is our hobby. This is what we enjoy. But sometimes you, the subject matter, you start to enjoy a little bit less. This particular project is really, you know, battering me down. But you still want to be painting, you still want to be doing something, you still want to be building, whatever it might be. So in that situation, switching to another project that you've got within relative arm's reach is, I think, actually a really good way to not skip a step and to keep your motivation going so that you can keep producing. And then eventually, you'll come back to that thing that annoyed you or whatever it was, and then get that thing finished, and then just keep going on your way.